What's up guys, this is Preheat, World First Raider in Complexity Limit and Guide Rider for Wowhead. And today we are going to be talking about Fire Mage. So with every new expansion comes a lot of change in turmoil you just due to the uh, the swapping out of the systems that exist within the expansion. Uh, losing essences, Azerite, corruption, special items like the Ashara's Fauna Power, Hyper Dead Wrist Wraps, you know, all of this is going to cause the spec to not play as well. But, you know, Fire does borrow a lot more when it comes to these borrowed systems than most of its peers. Um, all classes are going to have their toolkits updated with new spells, new covenant abilities, new legendary items, new conduits, etc. But what we're going to be talking about is specifically what you should be doing as a Fire Mage. So that's going to be which covenant you should pick which soul binds you should use, which conduits you should use, what legendaries you should craft first, and of course, how to play the class. So let's go ahead and get started. So don't let anyone tell you that fire is dead. Fire is definitely not dead. Uh, you know, in Nihilota, fire was basically god tier. Anything less than god tier is going to feel a little bit bad for fire. Uh, but there's definitely a lot to be very excited about whenever it comes to being a fire mage in Shadowlands. Um, so first off is going to be the new stuff. And new may not be the right word for this, uh, since all these abilities are returning, right? So Fire's basically had some of these things as baseline before. Now they're going to be baseline again. The first one is going to be Arcane Explosion, uh, which is basically an AoE instant cast spell that you can use that costs a lot of mana. It's a great addition to the Fire Toolkit because basically Fire doesn't really have a solution for uh, for its lack of burst and AoE. So this is definitely a welcome change. Uh, Mirror Image is being added back as a utility cooldown, and it causes decreased damage and threat mitigation, which is great. Love having our damage decrease whenever it comes to uh, incoming damage. Phoenix Flames is going to be baseline, uh, and it's actually now used to spread Ignite. Now, this is a little bit of a not-so-great change, uh, but hey, at least we have a new spell to use in Combustion, so there's that. Uh, Alter Time is returning as a utility cooldown, so this is the version that didn't snapshot all your buffs and stuff like that. Uh, basically, what Alter Time does is it restores your health and position to where, uh, where you initially cast the spell, so it's extremely useful. Um, aside from Arcane Explosion, though, these new abilities don't really have much of an impact. I mean, obviously, mages are getting a lot more defensive because we're getting Mirror Image, we're getting Alter Time. Uh, but, you know, overall, it's uh, it's fairly similar to how it is on uh, on pre-patch. All right, so when it comes to Covenant, Night Fae is the best Covenant for Fire Mages. Uh, in pure single target, it falls slightly behind Necrolord due to Imani's passive stat, uh, lead by example, which basically just gives you a whole bunch of int, right? But uh, the difference between the two is small enough to justify choosing Night Fae despite this. Uh, I recommend choosing Night Fae for a lot of reasons. Um, it being technically 1% or less behind in single target doesn't really matter much to me uh, because I think there's a lot more to it than just that. So obviously shifting power, if you've used it, if you've uh, got access to beta, it's a fantastic ability for Fire Mages, okay? So uh, basically what it does is it's a pulsing AoE that lasts for four seconds, you channel it, right? and it reduces your cooldowns. So fire mages have a lot of multiple short cooldowns, like fire blast, phoenix flames, rune of power, dragon's breath, combustion, right? Like these are all very, very short cooldowns. The more short cooldowns you have as a class, the better cooldown reduction across the board is gonna be for you because you get more of a, more of an impact out of it. Uh, Night Fae mages can also use soul shape, which is the movement speed uh, increase ability. It's uh, basically like a built-in teleport every couple seconds. It's an amazing mobility tool, especially in the mall. It's absolutely amazing there. Uh, but uh, yeah, Fire Mage already has really good mobility. So having like Blink and Shimmer, Scorch, Frenetic Speed, Fire Mage is already extremely mobile. Uh, but you know, it never hurts to get more mobility. So in Mythic Plus, AoE is king. Regardless of what the affixes call for, more single target or AoE is always going to be best. And uh, you know, Night Fae performs the best in AoE too. So if you're looking for what Covenant is best in Mythic Plus versus rating uh, for Fire Mages, it's going to be Night Fae just across the board. Okay, so in terms of Soulbind, you're going to want to go with Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver has an extremely early second potency at only Renown 13. So basically you get to have two conduits slotted in there for potency slots. Uh, this coupled with the free cheat death you get on rank one, Podtender makes it the ultimate progression Soulbind. Like, it it literally can't get better than this, right? Already having a cheat death in the form of Cauterize is great. Uh, Fire Mage is the only range class with a cheat death just built into it. And now you're getting another cheat death on top of that. So, I mean, like, if it wasn't already clear how defensive Mage has gotten, right, with Alter Time being added back in with mirror images, with your barriers, uh, now you're getting two cheat deaths as well. Uh, so, yeah, Fire is very, very, very good at living. Uh, basically, you have three lives. So as mentioned before, Necrolord is within like 1% uh, 
damage whenever it comes to single target. Uh, Imani's uh, lead by example literally carries the entire covenant by itself in terms of damage. Uh, as for other covenants, you know, Kyrians have Radiant Spark, Vintir have Mirrors of Torment. Obviously, this is very strong for Frost, not so much for Fire. Uh, they don't really synergize well for Fire Mage at all. Um, they aren't terrible options since the power of covenants is largely based on the soul binds and the conduits that you get and all that stuff. Uh, but they aren't the best. And in a raid environment, if you really, really like the other covenants, you can definitely justify going them based on the encounter. In terms of conduits, uh, Infernal Cascade is extremely strong and it has kind of the same feels as Blaster Master. Think of it kind of like just a watered down version of Blaster Master that only stacks at two and only affects you uh, during combustion. Uh, as far as uh, other co conduits go, Control Destruction is fantastic for single target since it buffs your Pyroblast, but, you know, it's only buffing Pyroblast, and that's fairly boring. Uh, Master Flame is the same idea, but it just buffs Flame Strike. Um, now, obviously, if you're choosing one or the other, you're basically choosing to not have the other, right? So if you go uh, Control Destruction, then you're choosing to not amp up your Flame Strike, whereas if you go Master Flame, you're choosing to not amp up your Pyroblast. You have to choose either single target or AoE. A lot of cases call for both, right? Like there's a lot of situations where it's like you want your single target and you want your AOE, right? Like you might be casting Pyroblast and Flame Strikes in the same dungeon. You might be casting them in the same raid fight. So what I recommend, and this is another reason why Night Fae is great, is to go with Discipline of the Grove. So Discipline of the Grove uh, just adds more CDR, but overall when it comes to, to Sims, uh, it's only slightly behind in AOE and single target. So basically it's the best of both worlds. Uh, if you're in Night Fae and you don't want to bother having to constantly switch your conduits for single target or AoE, this is a very strong option, and I recommend it, unless you're going to only be casting one of those two spells, Flame Strike or Power Blast, for your entire fight. If that's the case, go back over to your uh, Class Order Hall and then slot in whichever one it is that you need, so either Control Destruction or Master of Flame. Flow of Time is also a very strong conduit. It affects Shimmer, and it helps to kind of counteract the nerf that Shimmer got moving into Shadowlands with the increased cooldown. The Cryo Freeze is also pretty notable as well because it's the first ever large heal that mages have just on their own while they're in combat. So I'm sure you've been in a situation before where it's like you're stuck in combat, you don't have invisibility up, your character's just slowly dwindling, you have no way to heal, you have absorbs, but you have no way to really heal your mage. Um, Cryo Freeze allows you to sit in the ice block and actually regen like a big chunk of your HP while you're frozen. So that's really nice. So Fire Mage Legendaries are pretty interesting, especially Firestorm, Temporal Warp, and uh, Sun King's Blessing. Each has kind of gameplay changes, and they're they're pretty interesting. Um, but some of the changes are for the better, and some of them are for the worse. Uh, so Firestorm is a very fun Legendary to play around with. It, it basically lets you machine gun cast whenever it procs, uh, but there is a slight problem with it. Uh, the Firestorm proc is generated whenever you get your hot streak, whenever you generate hot streaks. So it's not consumption, right? It's very important that you take note of this because if you use Firestorm and you're you're converting your heating ups into hot streaks at the start of your casts, that's just really bad. Uh, if you proc your your Firestorm while you're in the middle of a fireball cast, let's say for instance, and you've got like two seconds left on your cast, that's half the proc of Firestorm that you're gonna waste because you're finishing your cast. Okay, so basically, if you're using Firestorm, you need to make sure that you're only using Fire Blast at the very 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 end of your cast, or else you're gonna really really screw up your uptime on this legendary. Other, other than that, though, it's it's great. Firestorm is the best legendary for fire mages. It's really fun, uh, and, and especially when you get back-to-back -back procs. I'm sure you've seen clips of it, right, where people can just machine gun flame strikes or power blasts. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, so, obviously, you need to get over the hurdle of learning how to play around it, uh, but once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. Temporal Warp is another fun legendary, but it also has some issues. So, someone basically has to provide Bloodlust for you. If you are the one using Time Warp, then this legendary is Bunce, right? You need to be uh, able to use Time Warp whenever you need it because it's your own personal cooldown with this legendary. It's probably going to cause some drama, right? Like if you're in a guild and people are calling for Lust and you're sitting on your Lust just not pressing it because you want your own cooldown, people are probably going to get a little upset with you. Uh, so just be mindful that this legendary does kind of require some weird stipulations. Uh, but as, so long as someone else is providing Bloodlust for you and you're able to use Time Warp whenever you feel like it, it's actually a very, very strong option. For all three specs, actually. Sun King's Blessing gives us like a miniature combustion whenever uh, you consume enough hot streaks. It's, uh, it's really fun and it takes a little bit of playing to kind of make the most out of every combustion. Uh, but unfortunately, the Legendary's been nerfed so many times at this point, that it's no longer anywhere close to best. Uh, you can still use it if you like it, 
uh, but it is going to be a little bit behind Firestorm. So if you're looking for a legendary that doesn't really have as much RNG baked into it as the Firestorm one, but you still want to have that good performance, another good option for you is Fevered Incantation. Uh, so basically what Fevered Incantation does is it makes it so that uh, consecutive critical strikes increase your crit strike damage. So yeah, just think of this as like a safe alternative to Firestorm. So if you're looking for something that isn't as RNG based, and you don't want to have to deal with playing around Firestorm, you know, generating your hot streaks at the last second in every cast. Uh, then go for Fevered Incantation. It's a really great legendary. All right, so in terms of talents, uh, basically you're going to be choosing Searing Touch, Shimmer, Runa Power, Flame On, Phrenic Speed, and then on this row, it really depends. So Conflagration is going to be your single target option. Anything more than single target, go ahead and choose Flame Patch. And then for the last talent, we're going to be choosing Kindling. Uh, now, the only alteration I would say other than the Conflagration to Flame Patch thing that I was talking about just now, uh, would be Searing Touch uh, to Firestarter if there's ever a fight where you want to delay combustion on the pull or you don't really care about execute damage as much. Uh, I think generally speaking though, Searing Touch is just going to be the better option across the board in Castle Nath right now. Okay, so we've talked about how to build your Fire Mage, but how do you play it? Uh, so I've got a lot of other guides whenever it comes to talking about like the nitty gritty on this stuff, but I'm just going to kind of cover the basics for today's guide. Uh, so basically, Fire's rotation is all about generating hot streaks and getting the most out of combustion. If you can do those two things, you're going to do well when it comes to playing Fire Mage. Um, so whenever you're casting Fireballs and you get a crit, one crit's going to give us a Heating Up. What Heating Up basically does is it sets up for a hot streak. If you get a second crit in a row, you get uh, that Heating Up converts then into a hot streak. The hot streak is what makes our next Pyro Blast or Flame Strike instant cast and also doubles its, uh, its Ignite damage as well. The best way to get a hot streak is to cast Fireball until you get a crit. And then once you get that crit, you're going to want to use uh, Fire Blast to convert it into a hot streak. Make sense so far? Okay, so Fire also has more than just Fire Blast to help us generate hot streaks. We also have Critical Mass, which is just like a basic 15% critical strike buff. It also increases the crit strike rating we get from gear by 10%. Uh, even though crit's not our best stat, it's still, you know, obviously it's helpful for us to have this crit buff here. Um, in addition to that, each fireball that fails to crit increases our crit chance by 10%. Uh, once you have a fireball crit, then the bonus resets back to uh, back to zero. Uh, we also have talents like Fire Starter and Searing Touch uh, that give us crit uh, guaranteed crits depending on what the target's health percentage is. Fire Starter is going to be above 90. Searing Touch is going to be anything below 30 whenever you cast Scorch. And uh, obviously, we have our cooldown combustion. So Combustion gives us 100% crit. It basically lets us rapid fire off spells and do insane damage. It's the reason why fire is so bursty. If you're wondering why fire mages go up on the meters on the pole uh, so high, it's because of Combustion. Correctly, Combustion is the most important skill when it comes to playing fire mage. We always want to enter Combustion with at least two or more charges of Fire Blast, and we're going to want to enter with at least two or more charges of Phoenix Flame as well. So when it comes to the opener, what we're going to want what we're going to want to do is to pre cast fireball towards the end of the fireball cast. We're going to want to pop combustion and then cast Phoenix Flame. What this does is it makes it so the initial fireball and the Phoenix Flame that you're firing at the same time, because both casts are finishing at the same time, are both going to crit. Uh, once this happens, it instantly generates a hot streak, which means that we get a power blast. So basically, as soon as you let that Phoenix Flame go, uh, you can start spamming your Power Blast. Once the Power Blast goes off, uh, you're basically going to alternate between two things. So um, the, the general idea when it comes to Combustion is you just want to cast as many Pyro Blasts as possible. And keep in mind, if you have Hot Streak, your Pyro Blast is instant cast, right? So uh, what we're going to want to do is have that Pyro Blast go off. It's going to crit the target and it's going to generate a heating up because it crit. So then we're going to cast Fire Blast and then Pyro Blast again. We're going to do this three times until we're out of Fire Blast charges. Once we're out of Fire Blast charges, what, what you're going to do is you're going to start channeling your shifting power if you're a Night Fae Mage. This is basically going to refresh at least two or maybe even three of your Fire Blast charges, depending on your haste. And we actually do this during combustion. It's actually worth it to do this during combustion. Uh, and then after that, you're going to be basically going back into the same rotation. You're going to cast your Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast until you have no more Fire Blast available. If you still have Combustion Duration left over after doing that, you're going to want to let a Phoenix Flame go and then Pyro Blast. So alternate with Phoenix Flame instead of Fire Blast. Uh, and if you somehow run out of that even too, which is like, I, I mean, you must have ungodly levels of haste. But let's just say, hypothetically, you still have uh, Combustion up. What you'd want to do at that point is to cast Scorch and then Pyroblast. So Combustion's all just about alternating, right? 
you're either doing Pyroblast, Fireblast, Pyroblast, or you're doing Pyroblast, Phoenix Flame, Pyroblast, or you're doing Pyroblast, Scorch, Pyroblast. Pretty simple. Uh, so after that, the rotation gets a lot more simple. Uh, basically, you're going to want to cast your, your Rune of Power, which is the, the cast time one, not the one that drops all, uh, automatically with combustion. And you're going to want to just keep doing damage to the target. Uh, inside of this conserve phase or like non cooldown phase, what you're going to be doing is just casting fireball until you get a heating up. If you have a heating up and you have a, a, a fire blast available, you're going to use the fire blast to convert it into a hot streak. Remember to do that at the end of your fireball cast as to not uh, munch any of your firestorm proc if you have that legendary. And then you're going to cast your pyro blast. And basically all you do is you just alternate between just casting fireballs until one crits, turn it into a hot streak with fire blast and then let a Pyroblast go. Uh, while you're doing this, you're gonna be wanting to watch all of your cooldowns. You wanna make sure that you're not capping out on Fireblast charges. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're not capping out on Phoenix Flame charges. Uh, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your cooldown on your Rune of Power and your Combustion, uh, you, that you're just aware of where those are, right? Uh, I recommend with Rune of Power, just kind of using it as it comes off cooldown. And with Combustion, you're gonna to wanna to go into it, like I, like I mentioned before, uh, with at least two or more Fire Blasts and at least two or more Phoenix Flames. Bonus points if you can go into it with Shifting Power as well. Uh, and because we're already in combat for our subsequent combustions, having a Pyroblast in your pocket is also a very good thing to do. Um, so basically the general idea for combustion is you're just alternating between X and Pyroblast, right? And X could be Fireblast, it could be Phoenix Flame, it could be Scorch even. Um, so this is what you would do if you're if you're not a knife fame mage, right? Like if you don't have access to shifting power, obviously you're going to have to cast something else in that meantime, and you're going to run out of fire blast. You're going to run out of Phoenix flame. Uh, so what I recommend doing is just alternate other spells, uh, get your scorches in there if you need to. And if it's a situation where you want to be spreading that ignite to everything around it, uh, make sure to save at least one Phoenix flame for after combustion, whenever your ignite's going to be at its peak, because you're going to want to spread that around. Um, if you ever end up in a situation where there's like only a slight global left in combustion and you don't have time to get a power blast at the end and you're wondering what you should be doing, uh, just throw in the dragon's breath. If there's something in range and you can dragon's breath it, it's going to crit and it's going to do decent damage, which is, you know, pretty decent uh, for like an instant cast ability. Another thing you can do at the very, very end if dragon uh, breath is on cooldown is just throw an arcane explosion if something's nearby. That's good too. All right, so let's talk about AoE. So in AoE for Fire Mage is going to be anything over three targets. Uh, this is when you'll actually want to change what you're doing in your combustion is anything three or more targets. OK, uh, so we're going to start off AoE the same way as we did with single target. You're going to cast your fireball into a Phoenix Flame and you're going to combust right at the very end. So that they both crit. Uh, as soon as you get that hot streak, you're going to want to turn it into a Flame Strike instead of a Power Blast. Now, keep in mind, Flame Strike is not going to return anything back to you. It's not going to give you a heating up or anything like that. So you're going to have to use twice as many generating spells to get those hot streaks as you did whenever you're playing single target. Uh, so basically, after you Flame Strike, you're going to be wanting to double tap Fire Blast to give you another hot streak and then casting that. Immediately after you finish that second Flame Strike, you're going to use Phoenix Flame Fire Blast Flame Strike. After this, you're going to want to cast Shifting Power again. So this is your Night Fae ability. You're going to be channeling it in AoE. It's going to be critting every tick. It hits really, really hard, actually. Um, it's like a crazy amount of damage. Uh, but afterwards, you're going to have, uh, you know, you're going to have procs again. So you're going to want to use two of those fire blasts again, cast a flame strike, and then finish with a Phoenix Flame Fire Blast Flame Strike. That should be four at least. Uh, five if you're really lucky with haste. If you have even more haste, like Lust and, and Troll Zerking, and maybe there's a haste buff that you have as well, uh, keep in mind you can also throw in Scorches. Uh, so if you're casting two Scorches in a row, then you can drop a flame strike as well. Um, in AoE, targets are going to have different health values. It's very, very important as a fire mage that you're constantly aware of where a target's health are because anytime a target drops below 30%, you're going to want to make the best use out of flame, uh, searing touch by targeting the one that's low, scorching it, and using that to generate more hot streaks. And then you can choose what to do with those hot streaks. You know, if it's like two target, uh, you know, and, and you want to focus just one of the targets, you can use Fire Blast. But otherwise, I would recommend in any case where there's like more than one target that you use Flame. Uh, so if you have questions about why, why do we use Shifting Power in Combustion? Why is that? Uh, so the reason why we use Shifting Power inside of Combustion is because it sims the highest. Plain and simple. Uh, whenever the SimCraft bot was, uh, was, was asked the question, basically, what is better? This rotation where you use 
uh, shifting power outside of combustion or the one where you use it inside of combustion. It ended up being better to use shifting power inside of combustion. The only time you're going to want to interrupt your own shifting power to stop early is if you ever end up with two 2.5 or, or 2.6. Basically, if you've got two charges of fl uh, fire blast up and you're about to get another charge, your third charge. So um, if you're ever like going to be over capping, then just interrupt your shifting power immediately. Um, outside of combustion, you're pretty much going to want to use shifting power on cooldown as long as combustion and runa power are on cooldown as well. Um, try not to do it if combustion is like less than five seconds off of coming off cooldown, though. You're going to want to save it in that case for combustion. Um, also, try not to cap out on Phoenix Flame charges. Try not to cap out on Fire Blast charges because that's just that's just missing damage, right? Like if you cap out on Fire Blast, it's off the GCD. So if you're just sitting on three charges, that's just damage that you just never are going to get back, right? So obviously use that. Um, in any situation where there's more than two targets, you're going to want to basically use Flame Strike and you're going to want to actually hard cast Flame Strike, believe it or not. Uh, what I like to do is just to hard cast Flame Strike over and over and over in the same area. And I will use Phoenix Flame as it comes off cooldown just to try and fish for a heating up proc. Uh, and then if I get Fire Blast, once I get two of them, I'll double tap it and drop a uh, instant cast Flame Strike at the end of my hard cast Flame Strike. I'll try to do this at the end of the cast though, because once again, I don't want to munch my uh, my Firestorm, right? Like if Firestorm procs and I'm in the middle of a Flame Strike, cat, uh, flame strike cast, then I'm just going to be wasting precious seconds of, of uh, Firestorm. So that's not good. Once your targets reach 30%, you want to cast Scorches on it for the guaranteed crits, you, and you're going to want to use those for Hot Streak Flame Strikes as well in AoE. So definitely try to snipe mobs that are low health to try and get more and more Flame Strikes and get the most out of that Flame Patch. Uh, and remember, if you are ever in a situation where you aren't sure what to do, remember your ABCs. Always be casting. It's the most important thing as a caster. If you're not doing anything, if you're just idling, basically you won't do any damage, right? Even if you're casting the wrong spells, at least you're going to be at, you know, getting damage, right? So make sure that you're always casting a spell. If you aren't sure what to do, just, you know, press something, right? Just press Scorch or Fire Blast or, or, or Fireball. It doesn't matter. As long as you're doing something, as long as you aren't capping out on Fire Blast charges, and as long as you are constantly casting spells, you're already going to do better than most. All right, yeah, so if you aren't used to playing Mage, it'll probably take a little bit to kind of have it all seep in, but remember, practice, practice makes perfect, right? So if you want to ever ask me questions, remember, I do stream on Twitch. Uh, link in the bio, so go check me out there. I stream most weekdays. Uh, also consider reading my Wowhead Guide for Fire if you're having trouble and you're, you're getting tripped up. Uh, but yeah, you know, the Fire Mage is something I'm really, really looking forward to playing again in Shadowlands. I'm especially looking forward to Night Fae because I love the Night Fae ability, uh, Shifting Power. It's great. I also love Dreamweaver. I really, really hope they don't nerf Fire Mage before Shadowlands comes up. Please, Blizzard, do not nerf Fire Mage. I'm loving it so much. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this guide, then go ahead and click like. If you loved it, subscribe and ring the notification bell. I have more guides that are going to be coming out later this week. There's going to be a guide about Arcane Mage, a guide about Frost Mage, and I also have a guide for pre preparing for Shadowlands as well. Uh, since I'm going to be using like a speed set, I'm going to try and level really quickly. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.